Hey guys, welcome back to our weekly education webinar. Uh, today we're going we're going to just kind of go over the, the changes to so make sure everybody's on the same page and to make sure that you're getting that you understand everything that you're getting. And then we'll uh, recap my trades. We'll finish up with um, recapping my trades for the day. So I hope everybody had a, a good day. And y'all didn't give back all of those profits you made this morning. I know some of you guys did pretty good this morning, so I didn't want to see you give it, give give any of it back. Right, so, how many of you have gone through these stages before? The four stages of a day trader. <laughs> you know when um. You know, we get asked about how our day was. Did we have a good day trading? And you're like, yeah, I had a pretty decent day. And then you start thinking about that trade that you probably shouldn't have taken. That kind of like, ugh, whatever. You know, that, that one really, I don't even understand why I took that trade. It made absolutely no sense. And I just gave money back. So you take a drink. You know, you got to take a drink. And, um, you know, then you just shake it off. And then I asked my wife, how was her day? <laughs> then that's kind of what I go through every day. You know, I don't care how bad the day was. I always try to make sure that I start out positive, but then when I start to analyze and think about it, then it starts to work on my nerves. <clears throat> then by the end, I'm fine. I'm ready to, to get started again. Yep, the recording is going. Got it recorded. All right, so the whole premise know behind this community is to be an education community to help people learn the right way to day trade and what it really takes to be successful you know I'm not selling you no know, hopes and dreams and all of this stuff that's that's not what I'm about you know I went through the whole range of emotions you know I got suckered in by somebody you know lead me to believe that it's a lot easier than it was but when I got into it I found that I had a passion for it I loved it so I did what I had to do to and figured out what I needed to figure out so that I could be successful and that's been my focus so what I what I had to do last week and last weekend and really I've been thinking about it for a while is to you know come up with some type of mission statement. You know, what's my mission? And everything that I do in average Joe trading should be centered around my mission. And I tried to just sum it up in, in one or two words and the one word was education if I use two words is education and mentoring and remember last night we talked about in the video we talked about the difference in the definition of a teacher you know and a mentor you know I'm trying to to teach you through personal instruction through personal um, demonstrations you know showing you really sharing exactly what I do and how how I do it every day 
And so I, I looked at everything and I'm like, you know, kind of all over the place here. So let's try to narrow the focus. Let's focus this on education. You know, I'm not trying to turn this into a standalone business and try to run it because you don't have time to focus on trading. You don't have time to focus on helping traders because you're trying to, you know, run a business and stay ahead of the game and all of this. So that's not what this is about. So what I did was I simplified the subscription options. Now, everybody that's already subscribed now, that already has an active subscription, your pricing, what you pay, is not going to change. The, what's going to change is what you get for what you pay. That's what's changing. You know, I used to do the day trading class standalone. I used to do the swing trading class standalone. Now, I'm making it part of the subscription, which is why the price is going up a little bit because you're going to be getting more. But you guys are grandfathered in, so you'll be getting more for less. Those of you that took the standalone classes with me, you're going to have access to classes for life for as long as I live. I may I may not outlive you guys, but as long as I'm living and doing these classes, you're going to have access to them. Whether you are still a member of Chad or not, you know, that's what you paid for. That's what I promised from day one, and that's what you're going to get. Um, and as I continue to add more to it, you're going to continue to get more value. So it's it's all about bringing everything together, trying to make it as simple and as focused as possible so I can reach more people. I can touch more people and help them actually achieve their goals. So the day trading chat room is going to pretty much stay the same. I'm going to continue to straight to stream my platform and scans live. Um, continue to do the day trade I mean the daily pre-market watch list I'm gonna keep the news on you know when I when we're in trades when the market is busy you don't want to have all this stuff in your ear so that's why it's not on you know once the market starts and we're gonna continue to have these weekly education webinars right here in chat you get the the um, day trading course that I do is day trading the average Joe way. Now it's 20 classes. It used to be 14, it's 20 now. And in that class, that's where I teach the process and the strategies that I use you know, to get to where I am. What I use to work myself out of my job and into you know, what I'm doing now. And I added the trading ETFs, I added the trading IPOs on the pre-market trading. I added all that to the classes. So, you know, we've got all of that. That's different. You know, the class has been up upgraded. I've done a little bit more to it. Um, plus, the live mentoring is always there because I'm live in the class. You know, some of you have to watch the recording because you may not be in in the room when we do the class but I'm selling a live class if you have to watch the videos that's fine you know you could shoot me an email at any time if you need to ask me about something or talk about something you know we can chat for a few since you're not in the class but the key is understanding that you know I'm here for you I'm here to help you learn and to understand what's going on and nobody should sit there and not get something and not reach out for help because in that case you're wasting your money and you're wasting your time so that's why that option is there now the 
the classes are going to be here in chat because there everybody that's a member gets to go through the classes and you can take them as many times as you want you know because as long as you're in chat you can take it as many times as you want the only people that have lifetime access are the ones that bought it standalone and if you still want to do that that's going to be up for the for the week the rest of the week because i had some people email me and say please leave it up i don't get paid till friday and i want i don't want to miss out on being grandfathered in under the good the cheaper rate so i'm leaving it up if you want to do the standalone class where you have access to it for life you can still do that um so the the old classroom is going to be the swing trading chat room and i'm in there I start at nine o'clock and when you log in starting next week you're going to see the main room and in and the swing trading room right now it says the AJT classroom but that's going to change to the swing trading chat room and I go on there at nine o'clock every day um, talk about what I'm looking at that day and what my plans are um, what what happened the day before you know all of this stuff you know we'll be talking about all of that um, and every Sunday morning we have a weekly watch list build strategy session because for me I like to build my watch list on Sunday and watch these stocks throughout the week because eventually one or two may set up and that's know what I'm doing on Sunday and we're looking at the market and we're talking about you know how we need to approach the market you know what's it telling me what's this telling me what's that telling me now that's what we're talking about there um, plus you get the swing trading the average Joe way that's 10 classes and again you're gonna learn the process and strategies that I use to swing trade while I was working because I had to, you know, and you'll I, you'll learn more about this when in the class. But you know, I had to make my schedule around work so that I could trade. Because the only way I could work my way out of work is to be able to trade. So some days I couldn't day trade. Some weeks I couldn't day trade because of the schedule. So I had to swing trade. And you know, I kind of develop a swing trade system that I use and it's a short term thing so I would I wouldn't hold anything over the weekend I would try to find a stop to get in on Monday or Tuesday and try to hit my target by Thursday or Friday but I never would leave anything on over the weekend and also you get you get the um, the Traders Mindset Workshop. That's four classes. We're actually finishing up the one we started a couple of weeks ago. Um, coming up, um, I have to look at tomorrow. I'll figure. I'll, I'll figure something out tomorrow. But that's the Traders Mindset Workshop, and this is what helps you understand. The mentality you have to have in trading you know for me trading is 20 percent fundamental and technical and 80 percent mental because it's easy to learn the setups it's easy to see them after the fact but when you're watching an active chart that bell goes off and the the, the prices are going up and down and the, the candlesticks are forming execution becomes paramount and if you can't keep your mind in the game you can't execute so everything about it then becomes a mind game or 
it's it's a psychological game. It's all about how well you prepare mentally to do what you need to do. And that's 80% of being consistent and successful in trading. Because why you know, why do you think so many people fail? They don't address the elephant in the room. They just ignore it and hope it goes away. And, or they try to follow somebody so it could take some of the stress off of them. So if they could just follow somebody in and follow somebody out, they won't have to worry about it. But they're closing their mind because that's a, another thing altogether. You still have to execute. It's still mental. Still psychological. So I feel that is very important. So one subscription for everything. That's that's what it is. And we we just start over every time we finish, we take a little break and we start over. Every time we finish, we take a little break and we start over. And the, the beauty of this is almost like every quarter the market's going to be in a different cycle. So there are going to be different things that we talk about, different things that we look at, you know, which I think is, is pretty cool. You know, that was one of the things that I liked about teaching was that every time I got a new class, it was different. You know, there, we were at a different point in society. Technology had changed and just in just a year, you know, new cars came out, new technology um, in, in motorsports. There was new, new technology, new things to learn about. And I think that's the way it is in, in trading. Every, every quarter, there's going to be something different. And that's what makes this, a, you know, a, I want to say fun. You know, but I'm biting my tongue with fun because that's kind of, <laughs> you know, it's not fun all the time. But, um, you know, I just enjoy it. So the way it works, the new price for the monthly subscription is 99 a month. The old price that everybody's paying now is 69 That's going to change. That's going to stay the same for you guys. If you're in you're in if you're out you're out so that's going to stay the same the quarterly is something we just started for the fourth quarter um if you want to do quarterly is 149 under the old pricing 229 under the new uh, so if you do quarterly you you save about 23 percent over paying it monthly and yearly um, the new price is five ninety nine versus the old price is three ninety nine but subscribing yearly saves you about fifty percent over paying it monthly um I put that option out there because some people do like to pay up front they like a deal and that's a pretty big deal you know I'm um, doing it for the year so like I said. These three prices are going to be up through the end of the week. Um, you know, I got convinced by some people to leave it up. And, you know, I said, okay, I'll give you to the end of the week. I know announcing it at the beginning of the week is kind of, kind of messed up. So I'm leaving it out there to the end of the week. At the end of the week, that page goes away on the website. And we'll have all the new stuff put up. So if you want to get locked in and stay at this price, this is everything you get. Everything you get for your subscription. So I want to, you know, make sure everybody understood that and knew exactly what you what you were getting. On um, the mentoring is gonna pretty much stay the same in packages the enhanced mentoring is going to change that goes up because the year the subscription to the chat room goes up 
but the individual mentoring is the same because that doesn't have the chat subscription or if you're already a member let's say you're already a member you've already done either the enhanced or you've done the individual and you are a member of the community already you can add three hours of one-on-one -on -one time on that's always been there you know for for 200 bucks you don't have to pay I mean it's a discount once you've done it already um, and some people need the one-on-one -on -one instruction they need that they need that accountability and and that's where that comes in so that's the only change that we're gonna see on that um so this is a calendar I'm gonna try to make sure I get this put out every month and that we have it on the website and this is how it's gonna work pretty much the same thing that we did before on Wednesdays we're gonna have the weekly education webinar on Tuesday I mean on Thursdays we'll do the traders mindset and the swing trading so we'll go back and forth between the two so next week we'll start the swing trading class um, tomorrow I've got to um, figure out what I'm gonna do we've got parent teacher conference tomorrow and I've got to deal with some issues at my son's school so we may I'm probably gonna have to reschedule it or do it earlier in the day but I'll let you know tomorrow in in chat um, on Sundays you see we do the swing trading and watch this bill and on Tuesdays is gonna be the day trading class so Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday you know we'll meet Sunday mornings for for the classes now the education webinars what I want you guys to do is to email me some things that you want to talk about you know what are some of the things that um you guys need help with you know it may be level two it may be reading price action this could be an extension of the classes if we go over something in the class and you don't really get it send me an email and you know I put them together and I'll see we can address these in our webinars every Wednesday because I want everything to be relevant I don't want to um, come up with something that nobody really cares about you know I, I want it to be relevant so giving me feedback for our weekly education webinars um, you have an input in that so that's how our calendar is gonna go so does anybody have any questions before we move on into the trade recap here You know, I'm not a salesman, so I kind of, every time I was trying to explain it, I guess I just confused more and more people. So I tried to simplify it and make it to where if I was reading it to myself, I could understand it. So that's where I'm at. All right, so okay, I just got 1 p.m. Yeah, if you have, let's say you have a monthly membership now. If you want to upgrade it Friday, you know, before the week is out to say uh, a quarterly under the, the old pricing, or if you want to do a yearly under the old pricing, you can do that. You know you're not stuck where you are right now now after this week you will be but right now you're not stuck you do have the option to you know pick and choose what you want to do 
and it's still open those those people that aren't members that want to get in now they can you know I'm just leaving it up through the end of the week and Monday morning we're hitting the ground running you either in or you out and we're gonna keep going because I you know my number one priority is trading and teaching teaching and trading trading and teaching so I want to focus on that um it should automatically renew unless you did unless you canceled it and if you canceled it your renew then you won't be able to renew at the old price if you um have a if you signed up with no PayPal account then it's not going to renew automatically but if you are if you still have an active subscription say a yearly subscription and it will automatically renew okay yeah once you did you'll be fine yeah, you'll be fine. If you are monthly first and then upgrade it, you'll you'll be fine. You'll get a it won't automatically do it, but you'll get a an invoice. And it will be for the um it will be you'll get an invoice like a week before it's up and it'll be for the price that you signed up for, which would be the three ninety nine. Yeah, quarterly is what the quarterly ones. Um, you're gonna get a. You're gonna get a. Um, invoice, because I didn't have the quarterly set up, on. You know, recurring billing, for the fourth quarter. No, it is on there now. You know, it is set up right now, but I don't have it. I didn't have it um, at first. The same, the old price, three ninety nine. dollars Yep, you guys are locked in. Like I said, unless you cancel, unless you canceled it, you're locked in. Now, if you canceled it, you may want to redo it before time runs out. Because again, you know, my focus is on trading and helping you guys develop the skills and everything that you need to get to the next level. That's my number one priority. Yeah, if you're on, it just depends on how you signed up. Um, if you signed up uh, without a PayPal account, which there's an option to sign up without PayPal, then you'll get a you'll get an invoice. It won't automatically charge your PayPal account. You get an invoice that you actually have to to physically pay. But you'll get it like a week before your thing runs out. And it'll be for the same price that you signed up for. So you guys will all be the same. You'll stay the same. All right, you're welcome. So let's get into. Ah, you're welcome. Yeah, the everybody to sign up for the fourth quarter, you are you will be in on the deal as well. 
you know, if you want to stick around afterwards, you will be in the deal as well. Anybody that signed up now or that signs up before the end of the week will be in on the deal. That way, I don't have to fool with anything. I can just archive it and it'll be straight. And I can move on from there starting next week. All right, so let's get let's look at the trade from the day. All right, so EF EFHC, you know, was on our watch list, and you can see this is a daily chart, and we had this huge gap down. I mean, huge. There was nothing down here. We were in no man's land. So this thing could have tried to recover some of this or it could have just kept selling off and going down. So what I did was, you know, I waited. I watched it pre-market. I knew this thing had a big potential. I knew it had big potential. And so you can see what happened at 830 we had to sell off at 830 it just went straight up I mean nobody who saw this coming you know because we were we were under all of this resistance the 9 the VWAP the 20 we were under all of that and between 830 and 9 it ran straight up so obviously my first bias on this the first trade plan I came up with was it to pull back going into the open and then make a run up and start making a run up and close this gap you know try to close some of this gap because sometimes you get a stop that'll gap down on just plain and pure emotion and then it decides that okay the market's like these people are overreacting so I'm just thing is so cheap now I'm gonna just get in and they just start buying this back up so I didn't know if that was going to be the case here or not so going into the open we had this this candle here it, it went up and then it sold off then it got bought back up again right over the nine moving average well because it closed up here, I wasn't going to do like I like to do sometimes. When this stock goes up and tests the VWAP and comes back, I would get in here. But I wasn't really comfortable with this yet. So I waited till we got to the open range low here. And I took it. And we did get a little move down. We came back, got another retest. And we were trying to hold this opening range low. Now we tried to hold it. Um, but it couldn't. Ended up selling off. Hit my first target here just through 28. At 27.95. Um, came down, hit my next target at 27. And I had a neck another one down around 26. 50 I think I can't remember what I put it in at but I was trying to use whole and half dollar marks and because this thing was so volatile I was trying to catch 75 cents to a point you know move every time but we recovered once we got over VWAP I mean the nine good I went ahead and got out and said you know if it came up here and rejected I was going to jump on it again um, but it didn't. It claimed VWAP, held it, pushed back over it, went through, back through the opening range low, 
um, ran up and started pulling back again. So I thought about getting in this during lunch, but now it's like, nah, you know, this isn't, it wouldn't be a smart thing to do. So I waited. Coming out of lunch, it lost the VWAP here. And I saw it here. And I almost took it here coming out of lunch. But I was like, no, I need to wait. Let it retest. And you'll see in a minute why I told myself to do that. Because this is what I normally like to do later in the day. Now, I may not, I don't do this before lunch. But after lunch, this is exactly what I do. So we've got, um, you no. Know, so it came back, it held below the two, the twenty here. And then we actually tried to pop up over it, and once it couldn't push over, or well, really didn't even get the test thirty, and it started to sell off. I was like, okay, now once we get below VWAP, I'm gonna give it a ride. So I got in um, here. At 2881, I sized up. I didn't go in full size here because this stock was real volatile and it was bouncing around and all this stuff. So I was, you know, I only went in half size then. But here I went in full size. I was able to take half off here at 2825 and probably should have put an order down here at 28. But I didn't. I was looking for a 27.50. You know, again, I was trying to get that 75 cent move and couldn't get it. It um, bounced and ended up taking it off up here. You know, once I knew we weren't gonna we weren't gonna reject here, I just didn't see a rejection coming. And that was that. You know, that was good for 372.10 for both of these trades. I think this first one was about 270 bucks off 200 shares. You know, so even if I only had a $1,000 account, I still could have nailed this trade. You know, I could have made, uh, say, $250 on a $1,000 account. I mean, and that's... And this is, I can't say that it's not stress, stress free. Of course, we had the, the stress of this level here holding because I jumped in a little early. But, you know, I looking at the chart, I felt real confident that we were going to sell off. So and once I take that first cover, I can relax. Now, I can fuss about it going back and forth and not getting to the next target and not following through. But once I lock in some profit, you know, it can do this or it can go back and stop me out. I don't care. I got a piece of you. And, and that brings a, a, a level of peace over me so that I can allow this trade to work. And as long as the technical stay in play, this trade stayed on. You no, know, because once you lock in profit, you're trading on the house's money. You can't see the if you can't see the chart, try refreshing the chat room. You know, using that red X up at the top right. You can try that. Okay, great, great. Uh, so that was EVHC. Now here comes a stupid trade. I, I traded this twice before lunch and then after lunch. Here comes a stupid trade. Um, on DIS. Okay, this wasn't on my watch list. This just happened to show up on. I forgot what it. It showed up on a scan, on one of my scans. And. It was selling off and we got under the VWAP. So I was like, okay, this is going into lunch. Maybe they're going to let this thing sell off through lunch. Pull back here to the two, the 20 from the daily. 
This blue line here is the 20 moving average from the daily. This was the 50 from the daily. So I felt pretty good about taking this because we got the close and then I got in. But after lunch, whenever you get a stop to move through a significant level, my, my rule is to wait for it to bounce and retest that level. So in this case, I was using the VWAP. We we're looking at the VWAP fade. Well, VWAP fade doesn't usually work after lunch. What I need is a VWAP rejection, meaning I need it to pull through, go back, test it, and reject it, and I take it on the rejection. Here, it pulled back a little bit, and then it ran straight up and never looked back. And had I waited for the test, I never would have gotten in this trade. Now, yeah, I, I stuck to my stop. I only lost about 50 bucks on this. But this was a loose trade. And as soon as I took it and as soon as this thing was stopping me out, I knew right off the bat what I had done wrong. And I, I knew it. And I had just made a mistake. And I think the reason why I did it was because of a trade that I missed going into lunch, which was this CHKP. Now, I saw this one as I was getting ready to go to lunch. And we were selling off. I'm like, man, this is nice. This is here's two dollars, almost two dollars here. And here's another big window. You know, I could throw a hundred shares at this and just let it work. And I talked myself out of it. You know, I'm like, well, we're going into lunch. You know, this thing, you know, may not the volume had dried up here, but we started getting a little bit back was over 50k but I just convinced myself that I didn't want to do it so I missed this trade I mean this what this would have added a couple hundred bucks to my to my bottom line today completely missed it and because this was in my head probably is why I rushed to get this trade and even though it looks good, I mean, you can look at it and tell it looks real good. But the smart thing to do is to let it retest. And this would have kept me out of this trade. So that was my day. Let's see. Oh, and you can see this is the daily chart on it. This, this thing had... Just massive windows here. If it got below here, I mean, we it, it was just incredible. The potential it had. I mean, all of the stocks we looked at today, a lot of them had real potential. I mean, home run type potential. And so today was, was you know, pretty exciting. A good way to start the month off. You know, a good way to start this month off. You know, last month, I think, uh, I'll, add, I'll tally everything up tonight. But last month, I made just over $1,000. I think $1,100 altogether. Because I was at 8 at the end of last week. But I'll add it up, which is not bad. Starting with $1,500. And almost doubling it in a month is not bad. Especially being really sick for two weeks and trading on drugs and doing everything wrong that you shouldn't do. Um, I feel pretty good about that. You know, this is probably one of the worst, if not the worst month of the year for me. But... I had to look at where I started. I had to look at the big picture. I'm like, look, you weren't trading 
you weren't using three to five thousand dollars you know you were using fifteen hundred and you were trading smaller so that's that makes a big difference all right so that was my day does anybody have any questions about it or criticisms I take those two that's usually what helps me fix things and make them better for you so I do listen All right, thanks. The only the only people I don't listen to are trolls. And those are the people that aren't in the room that try to find something wrong or criticize what I do. You know, that I don't pay attention to. I've got a special file for those. Okay, Ian, just shoot. Yeah, just shoot them to me when you get it. Okay, Dustin, the reason why, let's go back. The reason why I went in full size in the afternoon is because it's less volatile. Oh, I know you're asking. A question and that and that's a good question um, here this stock was jumping around the spread was crazy and you don't want to go in with big size because what happens I have to set my stop to manage my risk and if I had gone in 400 shares here I can only set my stop at 25 cents so I would have stopped out almost immediately. So I, I couldn't I couldn't stand that. So I had to go in with 200 shares. Now could I have added back? I could have I mean added to this had I not gotten this crazy candle here, this big washout candle. Um, this pretty much took me adding off the table because I was so close to my first target. I was going to take it off. So really no room to add. But that's what I like to do. Yeah, I've had a couple, you know, that sign up that, you know, once they saw what I was doing, they realized I wasn't, I wasn't just calling out a trade that I wasn't taking. I mean, you actually see, that was the biggest thing. They were wanting to know, you know, are you actually trading? Are, are people seeing you go in and out of trades? Or are you just, you know, telling them that you're getting in here and you're getting, in, you're getting out there? So, you know, I had a lot of those, you know, a couple of those. Well, they'll make a fake. Even, I mean, they paid sixty-nine dollars to come in and and try to um, troll me or find some insecurities, or I guess some not insecurities. What what am I? It's too late in the day. My brain's not working now. Um, inconsistencies. <laughs> yeah. So they made a fake email, signed up, and you know the email's deleted now or, or out. But that's fine. You know, that's why, you know, I make sure that every trade I post is what I took in, in chat. You know, I made a point not to trade at lunch when I'm on the road, not to trade when I'm going to pick my son up and while I'm sitting out there waiting on him. 
I'm not trading outside of the room because every time I did, I might have done good on a couple of trades, but overall, it was a losing proposition. So the smart thing is, if I'm not here, don't trade. You know, don't trade mobile. Don't drive down the street looking at, you know, my phone or my tablet. You know, I even went out and got this thing to hold my phone up so I can put it there in front of me and I can look at it while I'm driving down the road. You know, so I, I had to, to reel that in. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's bad and it would be bad for my pocketbook if I get caught or have a wreck. Yeah, that'll really be bad now because I haven't, I'm, my, I, my granddaddy, you know, one of the things he taught me, he's from the old, old school, and he did not believe buying anything on credit. He did not believe it. And so he kind of instilled that in me. And so... You know, really, I you know, there's no way I could have afforded a house without a mortgage. So, you know, I had that. But whenever I had a car, you know, he was he always told me, if you don't have the money to go buy it, you don't need it. And you know, that's that was what it was. That and I would never I would always save up and buy a car. Save up and buy a car. Never had a car payment. But now, unfortunately, you know, this year my daughter, the money I had to buy me a car with, I had to buy her a car with. So now I got a car payment. Yeah, the sacrifice of a parent. What I should have done is made her get a student loan so I could keep that money from her school and pay for my car. That's what I should have done. But um, I don't want her to stress out. I want her to get what she needs to get and get started in life but she impresses me because she's like one of those those um those ice men that can pass the polygraph test and all of this stuff I mean she just doesn't exude any emotion which is why I think she does so well. Yeah, when she does, I mean, when she's doing it, she does very well. It's just, she has, I, I wish I had that type of mental fortitude. And I just, you know, I'm just an emotional person. And I wear my emotions on my back. Oh, let me stop this recording. I don't want to run it too long. <laughs>